the minus two they have in blue setup out there, the same ones back here. Blue setup outside, as well as Holly with Chapel Oak Peters. They got some stuff out there for you to snack, some things out there. Please make sure you stop out there and check them out. Bottom board is pretty high profile athletes for quite a while, and he's got some things on strength and conditioning. So, all right, thank you. Um, just to kind of get an idea, I talked with a few of you guys um, on break and in between. Um, what uh, class 1A schools? Raise your hand. Class 2A? Class 3A? Class 4? Okay, and now I think with basketball, it's 5, right? Class 5A now. Okay, so those of you that have the class 4A, 5A, do you guys have strength coaches in your school? What school? Two A. Okay, good. Because um, they have a luxury of that. How about the class three A schools? You guys have a now typically, you know, football coach or maybe the wrestling coach or track or baseball, whoever they might, you know, designate themselves as a strength coach. Um, the three uh, A schools. Do you guys have any coaches per se that you would go to to call them the strength coach? What school? Terry. Oh, Terry. Okay. Four A. We have good day class in our tradition. You have personal fitness and training for you. Okay. So you so in Perry they do it through the school, whether it's PE or and that's kind of a, I used to teach a coach in Dowling here for a while and they didn't believe it or not, they never even had um, strength and conditioning there until like the late nineties, if you can believe that. Their weight room was smaller than this room. And then, you know, we started doing stuff with the girls basketball team, you know, and then the boys basketball team and baseball and softball and all that kind of stuff. And now Coach Wilson, he's out there now, and he's got that weight room, huge Southeast Colts. They had a huge weight room. The Valley, they had, you know, great, great room. And Roosevelt, they have good room as well. I mean, they have a lot of so those 3A schools. They're starting in 4A. They're starting to implement that in their schools as their teachers, from junior high age all the way up to high school to get that basic techniques down when it comes to strength and conditioning. We call it fitness um, class. We have two options. Okay. I mean, uh, personal fitness would be more aerobic. Mm -hmm. uh, exercise balls and strength conditioning is speed balls. Okay, great. So that's, that's a pretty good uh, um, scenario there. Um, and as you go down to the smaller schools, you don't really have the luxury of that. I went to a small A, 1A school, and we didn't have anything. We didn't even have an athletic trainer there. Um, besides strength and conditioning, I do athletic training as well. So Brad Jacobson, you know, when he talks about his shoulder injuries and all that other kind of stuff, you know, Get a good trainer at your school that helps a lot as well. And if they can develop and help that strength coach with the strengthening, that helps as well also. So, but basically, I'm just going to talk about a few things today. Um, you know, just kind of basic things. You know, from the warm up, you guys talk about the dynamic warm up to the static and all that kind of stuff. It, it you know, it has um, maybe in the old school started with the. Uh, um, Static, where you sit there and hold it for 10 seconds. Um, dynamic, you know, everybody's doing that. You know, getting the body core warmed up. You know, one sport that really does a great job of warming up. Are there any wrestling coaches in here? Okay. And I, I used to coach wrestling as well. And those guys really get the body warmed up. Okay. The, obviously, the room is warm. Um, you know, you, you, whether it's just jogging or doing a cartwheel or a forward roll. Or even just sit here doing it like this. Okay, I'm not opposed to static stretching. Um, mainly post game would be fine, you know. And then there are even some stretches that I can talk about on break if you're interested in. Even just a simple one like this. If you have a an inflamed rotator cuff, that's contraindicated. That's not good. Okay. So just you know, we we you know, talk through little things like this and this and this, you know, and, and all that. So warming up. I'm more concerned about warming up the body. And Tamara here, um, she's going to kind of go down the aisle here, and and, and I'm going to have you do a knee to chest, and just kind of go through about five of them. And uh, she works with me. She covers the, some of the sports at DMAC and Boone. We do softball, baseball, um, volleyball, and basketball there. So she helps with that, and we do this one. I don't care if they're 10 years old, all the way up to college or pro. Some type of dynamic warm up. You know, you may call it something different, but you know, you're just 
constantly moving. Um, typically, I like to warm that things up 10 to 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, good. I remember when I first worked with, um, you know, once we were working in Iowa, some of the Iowa wrestlers, those guys would go for 20, 25 minutes, and then they'd say, okay, now we're warmed up. And some of those warm-ups would be like a workout for some people. So they get their body extremely warm. This one here is called Spider-Man. Knee to elbow. Um, honestly, you know, technique is important within the warm up, within reason, but I'm just mainly concerned about having a bead of sweat coming down the forehead. If they don't have that, they're not ready. My boy, the oldest boy, 13, I had him struggle, probably because I'm dad. I'm like, okay, you gotta get warmed up. He doesn't know what it looks like from the elbow to the so, um, so she's going through a few things. These are called um, military walks and practice. I did an intern before that, so there is progression of some of these warm-ups. Um, you don't go into the full ballistic kicks right away. You work your way up to that. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, another type of warm-up that I do is just with a simple stick. Um, I might incorporate this in the routine. Just a lot of rotation. Most people will do strength training in the forward frontal plane and right and left satchel plane. I try to do it in the transverse plane. Rotation, you can throw a ball farther, you know, get your whole body into it like this versus like this or like this, because that's only two planes. So you try to work all three planes. If you're running a track, talk to a couple track coaches. If you're running straight ahead, that's more than one plane. They call it uniplanar. Um, so you do the sports that are Soccer, basketball, <coughs> start, turn, twist, try to incorporate all those rotational movements and put them to warm up and exercise. Does that make sense? Okay. Another one I do is a band. I'm going to have her lie down on her back there. And she can put it around her foot. I, used to, I did this with one of the teams I worked with. I had 50 guys out on the field. I brought bands on the field. People looked at me like I was nuts, but we'd already won a state title, so anyway and I brought I had 50 guys we put a little band we do plantar flexion dorsal flexion bring the leg up you know get the hamstring activating so I mean there's a lot of different types of warm-ups you guys do anything different you can do plate circuits I mean there's so many different types of warm-ups okay um, we'll talk about strength speed and stability uh, education, explosive energy. Um, main, first thing is, is, is basically strength. Now, to get strong, typically in the weight room, obviously, you know, I'm a big proponent of all the Olympic lifts, squat, deadlift, clean. You know, does anybody do snatch in here in the weight room in their school? Okay, they're hard, it's hard to teach. Very hard to teach. If you're going to do that or even clean, you better know what you're doing. And, and start with kids at a sixth grade age. Even at a fifth, fifth grade age is fine with just using a stick. So one of the schools we work with, a little bit east of, or west of here, um, some of the girls, you're probably still in a third week with just a stick. And, and uh, we've got about 30, 40 girls in there. And we don't move them on until they get that technique down. Because I don't want to look at them as a trainer, look at their knee or their low back. I want to do more of the performance side of things, you know, in the, in the event or games. So when it comes to that, it's very, you guys remember Coach McGettigan from Iowa State? Anybody familiar with him? He was a pretty, uh, he's at Air Force Academy now, but he was, he would even have his college guys at Iowa State football when McCartney was there. He would not progress guys until probably the second month until they, did the squat. So we get these guys coming in from high school that were not even doing it correctly. So um, the technique is huge. So in regards to strength, you know, um, it could mean even a simple band exercise where she's going to do what pull up. You know, pinching her shoulder blades together. This is a strength exercise. Okay, this is what I would call a strength exercise. Another strength exercise is a good morning. You can do a good morning with a bar. If you have a band, you can even do it with this. So, straight up. 
Okay, that's a strength exercise. Okay, another one. So this is a good technical um, exercise here, but even to take it a step further, it actually does a couple of two feet, then go ahead and do single leg. So now we work on prevention, you know, of a female basketball player where their high rate may be tearing an ACL. So I incorporate that in there. So they can still do the regular front squat, back squat, you know, you name it, but they need to do some of this uniplanar stuff. So then we'll have her do it from the side. So now she's at a 45 degree angle, you know, tap that knee on the inside, and that allows her on the right side to push off for her lateral movement, lateral speed. This is an exercise to improve, to increase speed. So strength and speed go hand in hand. If you're not strong, you're not going to be fast. If you're not strong, you're not going to be explosive. So that's why I came up with the strength, speed, and stability. You know, you've heard of some programs like Bigger, Faster, Stronger, okay, that was out of Utah back in the 80s. You know, it, it's a great program, you know, but some of the stuff, you know, it's easy to follow, you know, but if you think about it, most, you know, not knocking anything, okay, just to make that clear, um, but, you know, with, uh, mo most people want to get stronger, most people want to get faster, but a lot of the girls that, the teams that we work with, they don't want to get bigger, okay, so I try, I try to, you can still get bigger as long as you keep your speed. Some of the football guys I've worked with, their fear is that they get bigger when they lose their speed. Well, you want to make, you know, the athletes more athletic, you know, more functional. Um, small town, I grew up on a small town, grew up on a farm, a lot of functional strength. You ever get those kids on a farm, they don't come in and lift three times, but they come in and now they'll, once they're, geez, where did that strength come from? Because they're functional. They don't do straight ahead, left side, right side. They twist and turn. They throw the bucket over the fence. They, so the I incorporate some of that stuff in the strength stuff. And you see these things on TV, like the duck man competitions and the flipping tires and the chains. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you better have someone that knows there's technique even to flip a tire and even shoveling, you know, and uh, um, even you know, keeping the load close. I remember, you know, my dad said, bend your knees, use your knees. Your leg. Well, you try to be, you know, have an ego. A lot of boys two lifts they want to do in the weight room are the bench and the curls. That's all they want to do. So I try to work the whole, whole backside, um, posterior chain I call it, upper back, mid back, low back, glutes, hamstring, calf. Okay, that's all the posterior chain. Okay. And a lot of kids, if they're good enough to fight the next level, they're very deficient in those areas. So another one is hamstring. Go ahead and in the middle there. I call this one the quadruple threat. It's just a superset to like a squat or a deadlift. So if you've got a group of three in a rack, one guy lifting, one guy spotting, the other guy or girl doing something like this. Okay? So it just get more bang for your buck during that 45 minute to a minute time frame. So try to be as most efficient in the weight room. Most guys and, and gals that open up the weight room go at 6 in the morning, you know, during the summer. And kids want to get in and out of there. And if they work, they got to get out of there. Driver's Ed you're dealing with. Um, junior high kids during the year, they're even harder to schedule to do stuff with. They're doing everything. Um, and some of the smaller schools, it's tough because you're playing more than one sport. So when is there a true off season for that wrestler? What is there a true off season for that track guy or girl? There it is, there it isn't. So sometimes you just got to try to get at least a couple times a week to do that, even if it's on a game day and they're pitching. I, I, I even do that. They can still do something, you know, but they they have to be used to it. I'm not going to throw them in there and you know, burn their legs out if they have to pitch, you know, that night. So they, it's all about getting used to all that stuff. Speed. Um, one thing I incorporate, I want you know, speed is important. Uh, go ahead and put that around the elbow there. I use these for, see how that would help with keeping your elbow to 90? Okay, most runners, they come here like they're reaching back for a baton. Keep the pocket, keep the pocket, put two bands on. We did a school yesterday. Um, we incorporated those bands. They're not very expensive. Um, so form running that way. Uh, we work on form running. 
straight ahead speed, lateral speed, um, even breaking down a cone. You guys are, you know, the agility test, pro agility test, you know, agility exercises. Even running to a cone, you gotta learn how to break down to the cone and then turn the corner and then come back and sprint. So there's even technique for that. Because you just can't print something off on a on a online and you know say, hey, run this, run this drill. There's technique to it. So if you have a trainer or if you have a strength person in your school or somebody that goes to some of these classes, utilize that. They, you know, because it's starting to become, I mean, more of a science than anything compared to even when I was in high school and college. So, um, you know, so, and, and then knowing when to, you know, when you do speed and agility, you know, when you do it after an explosive lift day, you, you know, so there's a three day routine, four day routine. <coughs> their needs is kind of how I work with coaches on stuff like that, you know, and their, their population. Because if you're an eight man football, you know, that's a little bit different than regular 11 man, you know. So, um, so speed, you know, that's one thing. Stability, what do you think stability means? Um, I threw that in there. Took the uh, bigger part out of the bigger, faster, stronger, and I put the word stability in there. Not, what do you think that could mean? Body awesome. yeah. What's that? Control your body movement. Yeah. yeah, so go ahead and come out here. In order to be strong, you got to be stable. In order to be stable, you better be strong. I've had a lot of guys who can bench press a house, but they can't hold themselves up in a push up position on the ball, move the ball, and hold themselves there. So you work on stability of the shoulder, stability of their hips, their legs. I might come over here and just kind of tap them a little bit. And maybe pull them this way. They don't know where I'm pushing them. So you got to be stable. If you're boxing somebody out, you have to be stable to box them out. Okay? Fronting somebody, you have to be stable. But that kind of comes in together with strength. So like uh, Dr. Jackson talked about the shoulder. The rotator cuff fits over that ball. You have to be, that, those rotator cuff muscles have to be strong to hold that ball in place. There's the stability. Because that's an easily, easily dislocated joint, that shoulder. The hip is not as easy because that's deeper in the ball and socket, that femur. The femoral head is right up in that socket. That's harder to dislocate. So that's, that's stability. Um, another one is go ahead and lay on your back, up to a bridge. You don't have to use the ball. Just holding yourself there, and just trying to knock her off her base. Hold yourself, okay? Hold yourself. She got a torn ACL on her on her uh, right side. You might do this. She's got to be able to hold herself up on this side. So recognizing what she has, um, that's hard to do. Okay, Put that up there. Okay. And then relax on the other side. So being stable there. Um, sit on the ball. <coughs> On the ball. Yep. So even holding your arms up in place here, holding them as strong as you can, and let me try to pull them out of her position. Okay. Exercise good for softball pitchers, volleyball, overhead, overhead sports, wrestling. You get to different positions. You know. Um, so that kind of that kind of makes sense with stability. That's just a few exercises. And one more I'm going to show you going on the wall with that band. <clears throat> I mean, this one requires strength to do. But if you go up and down there, you know, I mean, you do that about four or five reps, you'll feel those muscles you don't really feel. So I kind of explain this to coaches. If you're going to build a house, you got to lay that foundation. And this is easy to do even for I, my middle daughter. She's 10. She even does it. She's only not tough on her joints. It's very minimal resistance. She goes side to side. That really fires those rotator cuff muscles and those stabilizers. Okay, those stabilizers of any joint in your body, elbow, shoulder, hip, ankle, etc. Okay? That's where the stability, that's probably the, where my bread and butter is more of the stability. If, if you build that house, you lay the uh, foundation, Put the first floor, second floor, and then that's where you build your strength up. Because I've had guys that, 
So they'll do some of this stuff, and their bench and squat go up quite a bit if they incorporate that in it. It's no more, not any more time. It's just uh, incorporating that within the workout while they're recovering, while their partner is spotting. Okay, does that make sense? So those are just a few things. Um, let's see. Another one, like on the, you guys have seen these, right? I like these just because um, two feet, you know, and while she's standing there. This is called the proprioceptive exercise. Um, you know, you can go, go ahead and everybody stand up for a second. <laughs> Okay, I want you to bounce on your right foot. Okay, once you now now close your eyes and try to bounce on your right foot. Okay, now close your right eye. Okay, and relax. Okay, a little bit tougher that when your eyes close or one eye open. Okay, and that's just getting ahead of the game for injury prevention. So if you teach that in the warm-up, by the time they turn their knee in a game or their foot on a base or on a, on a sprinkler head in the football field, I've seen them, sometimes they don't take care of that, your mind will tell you not to do that if you train this type of stuff too. Does that make sense? So, um, you know, knowing where you're at, you know, body awareness is huge. Um, with kids and gymnastics and dance at a young age, I'm, I'm okay with that, you know, doing a cartwheel, and as they get to maybe 10 or 11, you can tell if they're going to have that gymnastic body. They're a little bit taller, a little bit harder, a little bit, you know, so knowing where they're at is huge. Okay, good job. Um, and then what I have, like, just a couple exercises on this. <laughs> um, while she's bouncing there, I'll just have her touch the ground three times, stand her up. And you notice... If they have any deficit in their ankle, or their shin, or their knee, even her hip, it works up the whole kinetic chain. So if she's working all of that, then this is a good preventative exercise. Or even a strengthening exercise, more like an advanced rehab session in a way. I mean, Dr. Jacobson talked about having a good trainer, having a good therapist. Those are two things. Having a good surgeon is a third thing. Overall conditioning, if you have I have a picture on the West Coast. He hurt. He, he had elbow surgery. Well, he can't do anything for 10 days. So I gave him something to do for his lower half. He needs to be doing stuff with his lower body. You shouldn't just have kids just sit out because their wrist hurts. They can run. Okay. If their ankle is sprained, they can do push-ups. You know, they may not like you, and it may you know it takes about two weeks to get over that before you start having kids. You know, getting through conditioning. You always have those kids that are like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a little hurt. Oh, so I need my inhaler. I mean, nothing wrong with that, but you don't wonder, okay? I mean, I'm not, you know, I need that. Well, do you really need it? Or are you just trying to get out of something? You know, so part of this is developing a mentality with your team or your kid, you know, with your training too. You know, as coaches, you know who. You know, which ones are really good at motivating their kids, and they'll run. You guys are the gatekeepers for all those kids. What if your knee hurts? Where do I go? You tell them. <laughs> they listen to you more than most people. You know, so they'll run through a wall for you. Um, but when you know, so you get to do stuff like that, and then you'll eliminate those kids that are like that aren't. You know, oh, maybe I'm not hurt. I did that with a team one time, and after about two weeks, my stuff on the side was harder than the condition. But then the coach loved it because he had never had anybody miss, miss out of that. <laughs> so, you know, you get this kind of contagious. Another kid sees another kid. They're not doing something. You know, so it kind of trickles into the mind. So, um, anyway, and that kind of carries over to stability here, too. You know, kind of no pun intended, but. Got to be having a stabilis, all that. Um, the E part, um, explosive. You know, you have these buzzwords on TV being, you know, plyometrics, explosive, core. But a lot of people don't really know what those mean. Um, some people do. Um, 
what I call a core, is pretty much everything but the arms and legs. Not just the abs. Not just the low back. It's the hip flexors. It's the hamstring. It's the glute. The, all of that stuff in the core has to be stable, to be strong, to be explosive. Okay? If you have some deficit somewhere from an injury, or maybe you're just not doing something there, um, then you're not going to be successful. And your best players, it trickles down even to a business. If LeBron James is hurt, you know, game seven on Thursday night, if he's hurt, they're probably not going to win. You know? And then it even trickles down even to a business, and they're going to sell many tickets and all that. You know? So, I mean, it's just it's coming to that now. Um, so explosive, that component would be simply, um, go ahead and uh, stand on that chair, Cameron. And in order to be explosive, she needs to know, like say for instance on jumping, go face me. I'm going to teach her how to land. Okay, so she's going to come off the chair, land, and she knows how to do this because she's seen it with a lot of groups. So that's where the educational component comes in, land softly. Land coming down into a squat. Don't let the knees come in. That's Jenny Balgam. Knees come in, ACL waiting to tear. Okay? So in order to correct that, then I might teach her how to do a squat with this. Go ahead and put it below your knee. I love these bands. They're not very expensive. Well, where do you get them? I, I have some. They're like five bucks or something like that. They're really cheap. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and do a squat for me. Notice the band there. As she moves her knees out to the side, she's very stable in her feet. They're not turning in or everting or valgus with the knee. Now, yeah, now see how they come in if she's not strong there or glutes? Do about two more. That's a lot of girls have that problem. And even some guys do too at the younger age. You can tell, you know, I went up to one school on the Wednesday or Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday. This kid, I was like, that kid's potential D, D1, D2 athlete, you know. He, he would do something different than that, okay? But from all kids at like 12, 13, 14, 15, that, that's body weight. You can do strength there, okay? So let's do two more. So watch her feet. She's stable in her feet. She's not turning it in, and she's getting down to parallel. And sometimes I have a... I, I had these beepers from uh, BFS. I bought them a long time ago. They beep when you go down to 90. I like those because it gives them a good kinesthetic awareness. They know they're at 90. Because I could sit back here and say, get on lower, bend your knees. Or even how about this from the, how about a dad from the stands? Follow through, come over the top. Kid doesn't know what that means. They better know what it means. So when you run out on the mound, hey, you feeling that? They need to correct it. You can't correct it. You know, it's all about the feel and how they how they how they feel. It's them as they get older, they need to know how to correct that. Okay? So she needs to know what that feels like to get down to parallel. Okay. Good. And now lean over. Now she's like that. That's not good. Her core is not strong. So she needs to be yeah, so you're doing cues for the educational part. You know, you guys have done this before. Pinch, you know, feet shoulder width. Pinch your shoulder blades. Head forward. You're giving them little cues. If you got to laminate them and put them in the squat rack, like First Doyle at Iowa, set your core. Simple three words. Set your core. He has all those laminated in his squat racks. Okay. Um, okay. So go back up on the box or the chair. So in order for explosive, um, landing technique is huge. In order to jump, you need to know how to land. So then you would do this with two feet. I like to do it on a resting mat first. Basketball court's fine. Even a, a grass is fine as long as there's no divots in there. Good, good infield or golf course type grass, you know. I know we're not luxury to have that sometimes, but uh, so go ahead and land into a squat. So I'm, yeah, you don't want to teach them to land like a gymnast, like um, you know how they, they land and stick the dismount, they might do that, 
well, they, you, you, want, you don't want to keep those knees or those legs straight at 180 degrees. You've got to give a little bit of bend to it. Okay? So once you can do that, then you teach them to get down into the squat to a more athletic position. Okay? And your better athletes will be able to do that. And if they can't, then you've got to start from here and work your way up. Now, everybody has five, six stud horses. But it's those five to ten guys or girls that you're developing. That's what's going to get you to the districts and, and regionals and state and win titles. Because everybody has a good pitcher. Everybody's got a good basketball kid. Every, everybody, every school pretty much has all that. You know, but when you have three, four, and five starters on a team and a seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, Guys that are doing their positions and their jobs, that's that's what makes it fun. You know, volleyball kids, I don't know, yeah, I've worked with a lot of volleyball players, but I'm not a, I'm not a coach, so I don't know as much about the sport as um, you know, volleyball. But, you know, like even with no contact, I've seen girls blow their knee out going up for a block, coming down, not knowing where to land. So that's why I throw in the landing. And even I throw in like a normal, in the warm up, I didn't mention this, like a forward roll. They need to know how to land because they'll, normally they'll reach out and fall on, on an outstretched arm and break their wrist. If they don't know how to do that, I'm not teaching you to be gymnasts, but we'll, we'll even, I'll even do it with a team on a basketball court. At first, they're like, why are you doing this? You don't have to dive for the ball. So try to make it as functional to that sport as you can. I'm not going to make them not all the time, but just enough to volleyball rolls. They do it over their shoulders. You know, they're diving. Yeah. So, um, and then after we get up here, so like on this one, I would call that first jump a non-repeat jump. Even though she didn't jump, she didn't repeat it. So you might call it a land, but I call it a non-repeat jump. Does that make sense? So if she lands, it's a non-repeat. So if I have 30 people, I'll explain that to the kids. All right, you guys, give me five non-repeat jumps, and they know what they are. Now I'm going to have you give me just two repeat jumps off two feet. Okay? So we're going to go here and then come back up and jump up the block or grab a rebound. Or that's where you're going to move your vertical. But you better be able to know how to squat to get kids up here on a box that high. If you got linemen weighing 250, they can't get up. They're not going to, they better, you know, they might weigh 250, but they better be able to squat 450 or 4. You know, in order for them to be explosive, you, you know, one rule of thumb is, you know, I read in order for uh, uh, groups to start jumping, they better be able to squat one and a half times their body weight. You know, those bigger people, they're, 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 they're not as big and they're, they can lift more, but pound for pound, usually your strong guys are 150, 200 right in there. It's very, very strong pound for pound body weight. Um, and that's called a repeat jump. So then I would do it. Okay, go ahead and stand up. Give me a non-repeat on your right leg. One. Yeah, and that's see how she kind of caught herself, moved in. Okay, and then you don't, you know, they can't get into a full unilateral squat or uniplanar squat um, into one leg. Some people can. Not very many just sit here and do a squat with one leg and come back up. That's strength. Okay, so she's she's uh, working on that. Her knee kind of came in a little bit, so then she probably did a little better. Okay, and then that, that's called a non-repeat. So that would be like the um, educational part of that explosive component. Makes sense. So I'm, I'm big. I, I I taught for ten years in high school, and uh, uh, I still sub here and there, and I like teaching. I love the educational part. You know, teaching some of the continuing ed and all that kind of stuff. Education, you know, if you don't educate parents, you know, about cut weight and they never wrestled before, those parents are nuts. You know, what? You can't eat anything. Or I'll see a cauliflower ear. Oh my gosh, do I drain that? Well, they kind of want it. Kid wants it. <laughs> but the mom, they want to drink. And then you're out for three weeks. You don't know if you want somebody to have you have dealt with that before. So, no matter what sport it is, it's educating. Where I went to school, we never had soccer. I didn't even know what offside was. You know, and your kids are playing it. You understand the game and educating. 
I want to get educated if I'm not the coach. You know, but I'm pretty lucky to be around a to be around a lot of coaches that know the game and I can learn from them. I'm kind of as, as a trainer covering games too. I've been like at their side. You know, and I want to know. Oh, I didn't know that was the rule for that. Or you know, even hockey. I covered a hockey team one time. Here in town. Didn't know hockey. Didn't know that. Um, so education. Squat education. I mentioned this before with the clean. I need to start with this. Knowing your foot placement, uh, squat, shoulder <coughs> width, clean, hip width. Romanian deadlift, hip width. Okay? So on the Romanian deadlift, you know, I'll have her put the bar or the stick on her thigh and and then hip width and just kind of go through that and you bend your knees just a little bit. Yeah. And you need to feel that in the hamstring. And the kid might say, well, I feel my back. Well, you're not doing it right. So you go back up. Okay? So you work with the stick. And then, um, so those types of lifts are hard to teach. You know, then another school I was at the other day, they do a lot of um, push press and split jerks and stuff like that. And some of the coaches that, that aren't football coaches, they get intimidated by those lifts because they don't know what they are. And that's okay. You just have to learn it from them or practice it with the stick. And, and you can even have your girls do that. You know, because when I first started, the girls probably were ever in the weight room. And now they actually probably listen better and in a more intent than some of the guys. Would you agree with even some of the kids that we work with? Yeah. You know, I try to knock that ego out of that room right away. Because I can humble even a pretty strong kid pretty quick. You know, but it's not about that. It's just making them, you know, sometimes you have to do that. I remember when I was in high school, I thought, Coach, well, he's like in his 50s, he about killed me. You know, it's just, you know, he's an 18 year old kid and he can do a lot, you know, and you can't. <laughs> so, um, so just trying to, trying to get that out of their thinking. Um, the energy part, is this in there? And that's nutrition and sleep and uh, post nutrition tournament. My son had three games yesterday, eight in the morning, one in the afternoon and six at night. So what does he eat during that time? Softball tournament, you might have four days, four games, volleyball tournament. Football, you just have one game. It's a little bit easier to deal with when you come back because it's a traditional three game meal on a Thursday night. You know, basketball tournament, uh, you usually have one game. You may have two. When you're younger though, like like uh, Doc was talking about, you know, keeping pitch counts and playing basketball tournament, there's a these kids, I have, my oldest is 13, it's all about playing 80 games in baseball. What happens if maybe playing 25 and practicing the other three times a week? Whatever happened to that? They lose their fundamentals. You know, oh, I'm on a elite club team. Big deal. I, you know, I just don't have to get that here. I'm playing the next week. So, you know, you have to learn how to bend your knees to get a ground ball. You have to learn how to throw. With technique, they, he talked about throwing a curveball. I'm lucky to be a partner with a guy here in town. Anyone ever heard Grand Slam, Jim Holman? Phenomenal. Like with teaching kids how to throw correctly. You know, my, you know, and I had not had my son throw a curveball. I had him do probably the ego change up. You know, off speed. It's all about changing speeds up anyway. You know, not until the next year probably. He's 14, 15. Hard, but I'm not having to do that. Then you got these little guys throwing, you know, throwing number twos, you know, just constantly strike guys out. But you wait about three years old, you're going to do that. <laughs> you just got to tell your kids at a 13 year old, 12 year old age, um, you know, their mentality. It's just like, you know, like the other day, uh, one of the moms wanted to put a umbrella over the dugout because there was too much sun. And that's the just mentality we live in. Things is right or wrong, but I'm like, just you're in there for an hour and a half. Let's play. You know, that's kind of my background <laughs> philosophy. You know, I mean, pamper something that comes in the weight room. That mentality. You know, the energy. Oh, are you okay? Oh, I'm tired. Well, get, get some sleep. They need sleep. That growth hormone is working during those ages. 
sleep is important. You know, so, you know, what to eat before a game, what to eat after a game. There's so much stuff to think of as coaches and uh, parents, too. You know, uh, another day we're in Lincoln in the tournament and a little McDonald's for breakfast. The only thing that's open at 7.30 in the morning. So, pack your own. Whatever happened to that back in the day? Well, I mean, some type of fitness basket. That's good nutrition. Stuff out in the garden. Tomatoes out in the garden. Apples off the tree. You know, that's fuel. Carbs are fuel. Protein is good, too. You know, but then, then we get into the supplements. Okay? That's a whole other topic. I, I, I promote some stuff, like good protein stuff for some kids, but not until the right age. And, and I always preach that it's the word supplement, not replacement. You know, you still eat what you need. There's with, along with that, you can have a protein drink, a protein shake, help with recovery. But then you better do your homework when you go into GNC, because then somebody might have, you know, $100 body, but a 10 cent head. Because they don't know what they're talking about. Okay? 19 years old, never been through college, never done this, never done that, you, you know. So you better do your homework there. So it's all about doing your homework when it comes to nutrition, strength and conditioning, um, you know, because you want the best for your kid. Most of you probably have kids um, of your own that were athletes, and uh, some of them are probably like the kids that you coach. So um, those, that, that's where those three things come into play. But I'm real big about education. I don't know. You guys are all teachers. I'm sure you get that too. Um, you know, is there a question? I went through a lot of stuff. I mean, I, so. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have, uh, you know, like, I coach uh, girls basketball, and we run into a lot of ACL stuff. Yeah. And uh, is there like some, what what are some things I can do like before practice or before the game to have them like basically warm that AC up? I don't yeah, know whether yeah. warm it up or you know what I mean? Yeah, to, yeah. you need to uh, um, go ahead and do the band walks. I need to show them this. Um, a lot of times when those girls, you know, they're, they're deficient, they're you know, walking forward and backward. You know, that's a good five minute exercise. Um, they can do that while they're shooting the free throws or something. <laughs> so she went forward and backward. This is a good athletic position in any sport. Wrestling, baseball, basketball, defensive slide. You guys know what those are. A lot of kids don't even get down. So her core is strong <laughs> because her back is arched and she's down with her knees slightly bent. And she's not bringing her one more time just down that way. She's not letting her right foot come against her left foot. She's staying wide. Okay, and then, and then go ahead and do a march. So this works the hip flexor, keeping the hip flexor, the glutes, those exercises, um, squats in the weight room, hamstring work will help, and teach them how to land. So that's just a easy march. And a lot of soccer, I mean, you, you just think about those injuries that linger on through the season. So you think of those injuries like a hamstring pull. I bet you have about five of them during this year's track season. It's just horrendous with the weather. And they didn't, it's because a lot of them were running inside in the school. They weren't outside on the track or a different surface. They were, or they were running around one way. If you do that for two weeks in a row, you're going to develop something that's not normally there. That makes sense? So then maybe one day you go clockwise, the other day you go counterclockwise. You know, kind of balance it out. Okay, along with the hip flexor, I brought this table in, just thought I'd show you. A lot of kids that are sitting like you guys, they're short. Okay, that'll help the hamstring, help the low back. So I just got this table, all my athletes, they love it. You can try it if you want. You sit on the edge and just kind of open your whole upper body back, bring your arms back, and then let the legs just drop. You know, so that's just opens up that whole hip flexor. Because it's all in relationship to the rotation of that pelvis. So if it's in neutral, then everything should be working properly. Okay, I used to do that right at the end. Now this is a static stretch, this is a pose thing. Okay? There's a difference. When I warm them up, we don't do that. It's all moving and running and skipping. 
might do butt kicks, boardwalks, inchworms, whatever you do, whatever you want to do. Okay, this is nothing new out there, you know, uh, instruments. Okay, uh, so those are some things that you can do. Teach them how to land off that bleacher, that first step. I always have the tanner come out and pull it out to get all the drills in there. All right, give me two non repeat jumps. Boom. And they're really teaching them not to bring their knees in. They can get to that point, their glutes, their ACLs will go down. I mean, you can't prevent all the injuries, so I wish you could, but with your instruments, it will go down. And then no different than like with arm stuff through like the season, the teams I've worked with, elbow, shoulder, you know, you know those are the ones that you just kind of kick yourself. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So when those knees are falling yeah. in, that's typically a uh, Glute. 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 Glute hamstring. Yep. You don't want those knees to come in. Even in the squat rack, if they start coming in here, light and load up. Um, and then watch them do that squat. Make sure they're on the outside. Even like on chain link fence, I might have to hold here and sit back in that chair on the heels. Sit back on the heels. Or you get a partner. Okay. Go ahead and sit back. You know, she's leaning back. And then after so after two, can I do it without me? Fine. Now put up on your toes and do a squat. You see that sometimes. Okay? That's a back injury waiting to happen. Okay? Weight room is for prevention, not to get hurt in. You know, even on boxes. Boxes are great, but I've seen I had one time at a school there was a girl, she was the they were ranked in the top five. She was their stud pitcher. And in May, she broke her elbow, broke her arm because she landed. She hit her shin on the hard steel box and she fell. You know, that was a grad human. Good kid, you know, last year. Stuff like that. You don't want to, you don't want to happen. You know, question back here. I was just saying that a lot of kids, when you start talking warm up and stretches, you're losing. You do. I mean, it's. it's it's almost like, I hate to say it, it's almost like wasted time. It is. You know? and, and what I would do is have somebody else warm up instead of the head coach. Do something different. Because I did the teams that warmed them up because they're always with the head guy or girl. Maybe your assistant does that. You know, I did it in my 4 a school. We were luxury, you know, we had the luxury to do that. And then I got out of there. And I, that was my job. And I kept them online. And you're right. They don't, even when you throw, warm up throwing, it just, you know, like a, that, that, that's driving nuts. It starts at that young age, that mentality, if they're not spreading out on the field or doing whatever, that, that just, it's going to be harder for you to get that back. But it starts with that mentality. Do you do different things in warm-ups so that they don't, because I find a kid that you do a warm-up, you tend to do the same thing. Yeah, and well, yeah. Yep, I do. We have about probably five different types of warm ups because if I do one throughout the season, then we do it again. And then I can tell when I lose them. And I change it up. Even the weight room, you have to change it up. You know, they have, but it's harder when you're in a smaller school and they don't have a true off season. And, you know, they call that periodization. You know, if you have, you know, the larger schools, you may have, I guess, a good kid doing maybe two or three sports. But I've had some kids in Southeast Bowl. He did like four, and he was efficient in all of them. And he was busy. He was busy. You know, and uh, good kid. Didn't want to let the football coach down because he was doing basketball. Didn't want to let this down because he was doing track. You know, so you're pleasing everybody. You know, so, um, you know, yeah, I, I changed up a lot, actually. And I even, when I do my speed agility camps, I'll bring in somebody I've already back in grade one time, uh, Mike Condiman. He's not here anymore. And I brought another guy in just to change it up for me because you know as teachers, you know they get sick of you after a while and you might get sick of them. Work the weights. Yeah. Days of event, you are in a lifting program and get plenty of rest and nutrition is good. Good. Keep yeah. on the same program. Yeah. 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 That day of event. Yeah. Um, like a, what? The, what's for? Oh, I teach a BFS class. Oh yeah. Year long. You bet. So, you know every day Friday night you got football. Yeah, the if they're constantly doing that, you're okay. In my opinion, I agree. Yeah, yeah, and I and uh, I like their organization part back there. They uh, um, 
have those sheets ready for music and then you know, break the records and stuff like that. You know, there's just a couple things that I, that I modify within that. I don't, I don't call it that, but yeah, if they're doing that all the time. Yeah, our BFS class is in the morning, so yep. we have enough time to recover. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. They're used to that. But then you'll have a coach say, well, I don't want to hurt. And even swimming coaches, you know, all the tapering off. You know, I mean, I, you know, that's, you got to get with that coach. Do you have problems? Um, we're a 2A school, and we have hired a uh, performance therapy out of Coralville to come in, and they've done our weight program. Um, and it's, it's not our traditional bench pyramid and things oh, yeah. like that. Is we're that doing, with uh, Dave over yep. there? And we're doing a lot of the, the core and a lot of what's like that. It's hard to sell kids early to get them into that. Well, yeah, yeah. because I've had, even last year, I had some kids say, when are we going to go in the weight room? I'm like, this is strength training. You need to be able to do this. So it helps, it helps for you as a coach to relay that to them. And that helps a lot. What they're doing is great. So maybe incorporate some heavier duty Olympic lifts, because those are important too. If you can get both of them in there, because I, one of, the, one of the guys that worked with me, he worked there. He kind of, oh, yeah. I know a little bit about that. They go to a few different schools at that, right? Yep. Yep. Now they do a different school. Let's thank Bob for his time today. Thank you very much. Good. They got a uh, couple tables set up out here. One with the capital orthopedics, and Bob has tables some stuff out here with some of their products. That works pretty good. What is it, wireless to here? Is that the deal? How's this work? Um, well, I'm using them all with cameras, but this, these auto upload to that. So my, um, my memory card is going straight to the computer. It's too easy. Awesome. Oh, this is that Dr. Mark. Hi, Brian. Brian Bertini. Okay, great. Okay. Um, 